Um, well, let's just make Jason's morning even better. Oh, mercy. Hey, Jason, read this news. Yeah, why don't you take it? All right. Delvin Cook uh, was quoted as saying odds are, quote, pretty high that he signs with the Jets. Uh, so that's cool. <laughs> Your fantasy football drafts are just a few weeks away, and you got to start getting ready. The Ultimate Draft Kit is the number one tool to help you do that. Our full player projections, tons of resources, tons of tools, breakouts, value sleepers, and this thing is getting updated the moment news happens. Head there right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. It's July 29th. It's our final Saturday episode. Why, you ask? Because so many more episodes are on the way. Five oh, days no. a week from Every now. Every day? Five days a week. Well, it won't be Monday. Let's yeah, we're, we're, It's not August yet. Yeah. Starting on Tuesday, August 1st, every weekday, every morning, we'll be recording, releasing the episode, and that will go throughout the season all the way through December, and uh, I'm excited about it. The videos, they are flying through Twitter. Every good mm -hmm. play by every player, uh, either confirming or... Uh, Rejecting our bias? No, it's confirming. Conf only, all, only confirming. All my biases are being confirmed. And if if you were on the internet yesterday, or what, this was a couple days ago, you know fantasy football is approaching because big things were happening, which we'll get to in the news section. What a tease. Professional. In incredible. <laughs> Um, but happy to have you with us today. Lots going on. Lots of news to talk about, like Mike hinted at mm -hmm. so elegantly. Uh, Jason is here. He hasn't said a whole lot because he is reeling from a <laughs> so, subpar pickleball dude, performance this morning. I, I have to apologize to Foot Clan right now. <laughs> I'm just, I am so upset right now. I am like. The steam is emitting the from the body. We, we came straight here from pickleball and. I mean, I got welts all over my body from just smashing that paddle. I'm so <laughs> angry right There's now. There's no poker face happening. No, no. I, I was so bad, and I couldn't. And then it's just, just like <laughs> every time I went to swing the paddle, my brain was like, oh, you're going to mess this one up, aren't you? And I did. Every time I'm so upset right now. I don't know how to do this show. What are we talking, fantasy football? You're going to have to try. Bro oh. Brooks has been around us for Jesus. a long time. Brooks, would you... He's a broken if man. If you were to rate our competitive nature from a scale of 1 to 10, where would you place it? It breaking the scale. Yeah, the scale <laughs> is broken. I stopped. That's why I stopped competing with you guys <laughs> yeah. in anything besides fantasy Bro football. Brooks is too low T to <laughs> hang with the three of us. I mean, Jason is is he's been in it for I'm the trying last to, hour. I, yeah, I mean, I've you been took trying a shower, to kick it. You've been like prepping for the show? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Just I'm angry. Yeah, so uh, Jason's oh, here. Oh, man. If there's any players Jason doesn't like today. You're getting a business. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, watch out. So a uh, couple announcements at the top. Mike mentioned it, the Ultimate Draft Kit available now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Tomorrow, we will release another video on YouTube. We have a 2022 oh, yes. show highlights video. So uh, the the biggest loser, Brian Ketron, has mm -hmm. cut together all of our show highlights from last year. Many of them... I consider low lights based on the mustache I was sporting, but uh, so, wait. <laughs> have you you've you've changed? You've turned on yourself in the mustache. I mean, there were an occasional moments where I thought it was fine. <laughs> from from in hindsight, okay, where I was like, I think I think at the time I definitely thought it was fine. Yeah, but looking back, we reflect on life, and we d hey, you know you got one life. Take some chances. That's what I did. I went Arthur Smith. <laughs> And uh um, well, yeah, Arthur Smith current. Current Arthur Smith, which unfortunately reminds a lot of people of Jim Tom Sula, if you remember that. Oh, oh yeah. No. So mustaches <laughs> and head coaching jobs haven't necessarily well, Bill Cowher had one, right? 
Bill uh, Cowher was a mustache yeah, man. Yeah, I think that was, was back when mustaches were just normal. Right. Yeah, he was. I, I'm pretty. Yeah, he was a mustache man for sure. He. I'm oh, not yeah. misremembering. No, yeah. no, for sure he was. He's he has. It looks like he's a goatee man. So now. that's plus one for Cowher, minus one for Tom Sula. We'll see where Arthur Smith goes. But um, other things to mention: Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow us over there, I mean uh, X or what is it? Do it's yeah. Twitter though, right? It's it's it, it's still Twitter. X, wink, wink. <laughs> it's still Twitter dot com, but it's providing you the service of X, the social media platform. <laughs> That's right. Um, but it's also where we tweet. Is where I zeet. No, no you it's where you X. You X. That was confirmed. No, it yeah. wasn't. I think that's what Musk uh, said. He said it's called X's. Yeah, I mean, he was probably drunk. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Uh, quick question of the day. It's a super flex question. We have had inquiries around the super flex two quarterback drafts. And basically, uh, someone wrote in. They said, what is your super flex strategy? You guys want to weigh in on the uh, growing popularity of two QB and super flex leagues? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, we we just did uh, Scott Fishbowl, which is a super flex, and there's other nuance and, and strangeness to the scoring. But um, you know, Mike can roll through some of that. For me, I want one of the great quarterbacks. And when I say great, I don't just mean the top three. I'm saying Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, uh, Justin Fields. Those guys, I really want one of them. So if I'm at the top of the first round, if I'm in the middle of the first round, I'm probably grabbing one of them. And then I will grab basically whoever I think is a value as late as possible based on the tiers. So I love Geno Smith. I love Matthew Stafford for where he's going. Um, you know, uh, Goff, where he's being drafted, I think is, is, is a value. I just want to get value with my second quarterback, and I want a stud quarterback at the beginning. But if you're at the, you know, if you're at the 12 spot, that's a strategy that probably won't work for you, in which case I would load up. I, I would just go a little bit later quarterback and load up on the talented running backs and wide receivers that drop to you. Mike, do you have anything you yeah. want to add? So just uh, I pulled up our Scotty Fishbowl draft, the results, and it was essentially by the, the end of the third round, you had the, you know, like the bulk of the early quarterbacks gone. If you made it into the fourth, uh, you know, like Jared Goff, Russell Wilson, and then there's just some stragglers after that. You know, like the rookies, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Brock Purdy, of course, dropped down there. But I think that his his ADP will certainly go up. But for the most part, you're gonna want to have you're gonna want to exit at least the fourth with one quarterback because if if you don't have one by then, I think you're gonna find yourself in trouble by the end of the draft. Yes, Ryan Tannehill. Jimmy Garoppolo, whoever the Washington quarterback happens to be, they're going to be available really late. So maybe you can scoop up two more of those uh, those quarterbacks because if you go that direction, you're going to want to have three for sure. And you almost really want to have three no matter what because you want to be able to field uh, two quarterbacks, one in the quarterback slot and one in the super flex. But that's, that's about the timing is by the end of the fourth, Try to make sure you have at least one. And we are paying attention to you Superflex freaks out there. Oh, yeah. Freaks and geeks, baby. There are two uh, recent Superflex articles up on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, including Superflex rankings and the strategy behind them. We've added two quarterback Superflex rankings to the Ultimate Draft Kit. And there's another article, The Canons of Superflex Draft Strategy, if you want to dig deeper into that uh, uh, area, which is what, Brooks always wants to do. And if you play two quarterback, I suggest you go read those articles because I'm going to look. I'm going to look and see who's mm -hmm. reading those articles. And if and if no one shows up, I'm pulling the plug. Oh, really? I'm pulling the plug. It Which, will be, all of our articles are plugged into uh, AC outlets. Just But just the two quarterback mm -hmm. ones. I'm not saying I'm <laughs> I'm taking, I'm taking all the articles down. <laughs> he's, just, he's pulling the plug on the whole business, actually, <laughs> if you don't read these articles. So... Uh, they're good. Go check them out. That's right. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. I'm, st I'm still shook, boys. Mike, I was here with Mike when <laughs> oh, um, we saw a video of Joe Burrow. Hey. Well, first, the first thing we got was a small, small clip of Joe Burrow on the ground and being carted off. Stage one panic for Mike. Oh, and I no. say that. 
I say that because Mike, his dynasty team, and again, we're very my, myopic here. Yes. Uh, his dynasty team has Jamar Chase, and he traded Justin Fields in a deal to acquire Joe Burrow. So he is all in on – like it was a double whammy if Joe Burrow goes down. It was concerning, and then you see the clip of the play, also oh, concerning. Man. It was, Jason, it was a bad. It was a bad time. It was a roller coaster ride, and he was taking off the harness. Like he was <laughs> willing to be thrown from the ride. Yeah, I I wasn't here for the moment, but I was I was on Twitter. I was seeing it break, and all you could think is, please don't be the Achilles. Yes, please yep. don't be the Achilles. And it wasn't. Yeah, I'm, for many of you, this may be the first time you hear about it. Joe Burrow suffered a calf strain. And um, he's going to be off the field for a while. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, said it's likely grade two, typically a month. He said at minimum. Yeah, at minimum. So uh, I would be shocked based on the current news if we didn't see him in week one. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamar Chase came out and said Joe Burrow gave him the nod. He says he wasn't really worried. He believes he's all right. But you're not going to further risk Joe Burrow. Correct. I think this is the is this it, the second time that Joe Burrow missed I, the entire preseason? I totally forgot. Yeah, last I year this. he got his appendix out. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. I remember that we don't get Joe Burrow in the preseason. That's just not a thing. Which, Which is fine. This this is perfectly fine. Based on watching Mike's reaction to one of his dynasty players get injured, I realized how thankful I am Josh Jacobs isn't at training camp because you <laughs> right. can't he can't get hurt at training camp. Just stay off your jet skis. Yeah. All right, Garrett Wilson uh, left practice on Thursday with a right ankle sprain. Uh, you could see the uh, – I saw the photograph of the ankle turning. looked like a low ankle sprain. Um, you know, mild to moderate severity. It looks like it'll be okay. Yeah, he'll he'll be out for a couple weeks, but we're six weeks away from week one, so he'll, he'll be fine. And I, I want to shout out a name for dynasty players, deeper leagues. Uh, Jason Brownlee, wide receiver for the New York Jets. He was an undrafted free agent. They paid him like a fifth rounder, and he is getting the day-to-day -day praise of Aaron Rodgers as he has stepped up with the absence of uh, Corey Davis, right? Corey well, Davis and, has been and, missing some time. Well, and Garrett Wilson okay. now. But um, he continues to get the praise of Aaron Rodgers and might have been a value. So you're always looking for names that somebody oh, hasn't picked up. you got to look for those nasty boys when you're playing Dynasty. Yeah, I mean, by July 28th, there are, you know, a few names are going to pop up in preseason. You want to, you want to jump on those nasty boys, as Mike would say. Um, well, let's just make Jason's morning even better. Oh mercy! <laughs> can we get the, can we get the spotlight on, uh, on this guy okay. over here, hey, on Big Shimmy. Hey, Jason, read this news. Yeah, why don't you take it? All right, Delvin Cook uh, was quoted as saying, "Odds are, quote, pretty high that he signs with the Jets." Uh, so that's cool. Um, I, look, I, you know, the, the, the truth is I have not been drafting Brees Hall where he's valued right now. I've been a little bit more worried about uh, the, the, the team, the system, the RBBC, the, the injury, the start to the season. So even though I love Brees Hall, he is on my dynasty roster. He's one of the, you know, my favorite players and very important to me. I, that, I know people, I mean, I get tagged like crazy when, yeah, when Dalvin Mr. Cook, Brees. When, yeah, when, when Dalvin Cook news comes out or any anti Brees news comes out, I am, my, my timeline is flooded, but I really am okay with this. Uh, obviously it hurts his value. It's, you know, Dalvin Cook would come in and be the presumptive starter. I think week one ahead of, of Brees. It's more personal than professional of an impact because you have been saying that he's probably overpriced where he was being drafted. I mean, you haven't gone out and, and slammed your hand on the table for drafting him where he's at. Um, Dalvin Cook, look, the Jets are building an arsenal. And the reason that this can happen is because Aaron Rodgers, which we didn't have this in the news, but he agreed to a renegotiated contract, which frees up a ton of money for the team. It might be the most team-friendly concession that a quarterback has ever made. He took a huge pay cut. Yeah, so so his, you know, willingness to take the pay cut a la, a la Tom Brady in years past is enabling this team to continue to make additions uh, like Dalvin Cook, who also is scheduled to visit with the Patriots. It's also worth I noting. I doubt he gets to New England. Yeah, yeah, he's probably not getting out of New York. Um, it's also worth noting on the Aaron Rodgers contract that it, 
it does appear that he's going to play two years. I mean, we don't yes, know that for yeah. sure, but the the w well, his words and the restructured contract, I think it's a foregone conclusion right now that he will play in 2024. Which is exciting for Jets fans. I mean, yeah. it, you're going to be relevant for two years. Uh, you, it may not be everything you hope for. Maybe it is. But you're going to be relevant for a couple of years with a really good quarterback. Uh, you're, you're loaded. Um, you know, Tyler Conklin, I think, is undervalued at the tight end position. Garrett Wilson has been making plays all preseason or, I mean, all training camp. There's just a lot of excitement around that team. I will say this. The Patriots news, they may never visit with Dalvin Cook, but they, they're trying to. And they also visited with Leonard Fournette. And they also visited with Daryl Henderson. So, like, the Patriots inevitably will add a name to this backfield, I think, before week one. Also. Uh, but who it is will impact Mike's it, psychology as well. It certainly will. And I don't know if you guys had saw this because, look, in the grand scheme, this isn't gigantic news, uh, but Ty Montgomery did get banged up again. Shocking. So, yeah, but I'm saying like in the for the Patriots, who in in the plans is you know Harris, Pierre Strong, and Ty Montgomery. Like that's the running back room. If one guy is already hurt, then you're going to need to bring another body. In. You did mention though that uh, Ty Montgomery is not even wearing the helmet of the running backs. He's yes. lining up with wideouts, right? Yes, but I, he's still. I'm sure he would still factor into plans like all over the field. Oh boy, if you're factoring him into plans, that's a mistake. <laughs> said the last five years, uh, Amari Cooper returned to practice. Okay. Commanders. Uh, there was a report on ESPN. We is kind of echoing what we've said before, but an official report saying that the quarterback situation in in Washington is likely unsettled and expects Washington to open with Sam Howell and potentially switch back and forth throughout the year that would be the washington way yes it would i mean they have had more quarterbacks started than any team over the last five years uh there's more oh do, do we give, got, me, we give me the, the train where's the hype train at give me somebody, the train somebody hit that here we go west phillips vikings offensive coordinator yeah what do you say he said he's we run he's comfortable with alexander madison on Go all down. three downs me too. <laughs> and he said, quote, and I don't know if he's quoting Mike, people don't realize how good a player Alex Madison really is. Alex Madison. Yeah, he's on, an, he's on a short first name short basis. Short name basis. What do you think about Alex? Oh, uh, the, the, the nickname? Yeah. Or sh just the shortening? <laughs> it's a little strange because Alexander Madison is a dun, 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 like that's dun, dun, a strong dun, dun. regal name. Yeah. So, But I don't, I don't mind it. Hey, Matt. Yeah, I don't. I like Alex Madison better. So yeah, uh, let's hope Mike and West Phillips yeah. are right about his production. Let's hope. Uh, some other reports: first team rep reports. That's what we got here in the news. That's kind of fun. Anthony Richardson getting first team reps, expected to start week one. At least that's what I'm hearing out of Indianapolis. Bryce Young already been named the starter. Davis Mills working with the ones. That's Why? that's are not. You doing what? Uh, what are you doing no don't do this don't do this you're wasting everybody's time they're, yeah you are, are they really doing no, that? I, they're doing that because you gotta earn your stripes yeah, yeah. this is how we did football in 1945 give the number two overall pick the keys like <laughs> what are you doing give the wide receivers the quarterback they're going to play with. Every rep. Oh, my gosh. Of, yes. Of continuity between a quarterback and wide receiver is precious, especially when they've never played football together. Oh, my gosh. So whether it's Nico Collins or Tank Dell or, you know, Dalton Schultz, give them the reps with the guy that you're actually going to play. Re remind me how they got the number two pick. <laughs> um, was that who was their quarterback? I believe it was Davis Mills. Oh, put him, get him in the ball right now. Get him out there on practice. If you need to set up another field, put Davis on it and tell him it's the ones. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> just don't, if it's all about coddling the 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 mind of Davis Mills, just don't. I, this We're isn't in about agreement Davis. on this. This isn't about coddling Davis Mills. This is about earn it. Yeah, yeah. you got to take it, Stroud. <laughs> like, which is. It's very, it, to me, has been a strange thing. Your odds are pretty low of like, making it in that number one spot. You took him as the second overall player in the NFL draft. That 
is something was earned already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were terrible, and you said we're going to take this guy with our number two pick. You don't have a first You're not rounder walk next. Walk in here and like, be handed anything. There's no process to trust. You don't have a first next year. <laughs> you d- don't lose on oh, purpose. This is good news for the. This is good news for the Cardinals. It is. <laughs> if C.J. Stroud goes to practice and never throws a pass, only kicks the ball every time he gets it. He gets the the, the snap okay. and punt. He drops back and he punts the ball, and that's what he does every practice with the twos. He's starting this year. <laughs> Like, he will be your starting quarterback. There's no way. There's no world where he's not your starter. So get him okay. the rest. Kyle's telling us he did mix. Stroud did mix in with the ones a little bit on Friday. Got to give that first just, rep, man. Send the message. What are we doing? Brock Purdy took every single rep yes. with the first team Thursday. Yeah, because he's, he's the starting quarterback. Not only that, but uh, another little rumbling that Darnold's going to be the two. Yeah. Trey Lance is going to be the four in that situation. Yeah, they're they're skipping three. They're skipping three. To, oh, to, there's man. not a gap to be. He's got to work from four to three first. Uh, look, it's it's wild. I told Mike this morning. Yeah. It, it was one part courageous because like only certain kinds of coaches that have proven themselves could even have the guts to do this. And mm-hmm. Shanahan's one of them. Where, look, if you're not better, then you don't. You're not the guy. I mean, I guess it's ironic to have this conversation moments after the CJ Stroud thing, where like. You're supposed to let the best player play. Yeah, but they saw Brock Purdy on a football field, and the Texans yes. saw Davis Mills on, yes. on the football field. Yes. This is just – it is it is so upsetting personally to have been so opposed to Trey Lance being the number – being drafted that high the whole entire draft process, and then Shanahan hoodwinks me into thinking that he thinks that Trey Lance is good and then had to – Try and cape for him, and now Trey Lance's career is done before it starts. Yeah, I mean, much much like Sean McVay with Allen Robinson, Kyle Shanahan was wrong. Right. You you made a judgment to trade everything for a player, and you did the wrong thing. There's no way to say that isn't the case now. Right. You didn't do the right thing if you have a third string number two pick three years in. So Running back first reps. These were both from earlier in the week, but Rashad Penny got the first rep with the first team oh, yeah, baby. for the Eagles. And uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire with no uh, Pacheco out there. Oh, we're back, baby. <laughs> Clyde got the first touch um, with the first team on their first practice. Yeah, the the Rashad Penny one, look, they're, they're going to be flipping guys around all over for Philadelphia. You know, uh, the new Kenny G, Kenneth Gainwell, he'll get reps there. DeAndre Swift will get reps. It's just, to me, was – a very good sign because the off season was was spent of Rashad. The investment on Rashad Penny was very very small financially to the point of let's make sure he's gonna be on the Philadelphia Eagles roster. Yeah, you don't want a James Robinson situation, right? And so to give this guy the first rep, that just that feels that feels good and feels like he should be secure in his spot. And then I believe the talent of Rashad Penny will rise, and he's the he'll be the best running back on the team i i completely agree i just hate that he's getting reps because the adp no nah, no reps oh. equal injury oh. yeah exactly i was like just maybe maybe hold out a little Anybody, bit you're like you see that first did you see that put, first carry put him in the uh, um flat jacket no what's the those uh, big bubbles yeah <laughs> knocker ball or something like that where where you just you, you run inside the giant inflated ball put penny in that yeah that's an option you gotta put swift in there save, too though save him up no uh, no swift's fine um and uh, another dynasty name, Daneric Prince, yeah, Kansas, City, Kansas City, making a yep. lot of plays as well. Pay attention Running there. back. One of the uh, 11 that they have. Quick break, back with the mailbag. All right, no more breaking news uh, since we last talked, right, Brooks? No, sir. No more first rep hype, uh, hype train pieces? Not yet. Okay, okay. Into the mailbag we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, it's Saturday. <laughs> All right, into the mailbag we go. Thank you for sending in your questions. We have some voicemail questions as well. And if you have things you want answered, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, or you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302 464 TFFB. That's where we're going to start with a voicemail. Hey, ballers, love the show. Listen, guys, I'm in a dilemma. I am in a. It's my first time doing a keeper league, and I have the option, I believe, to either go Josh Allen, 
keep him in the fourth, or do I keep Alexander Madison in the tenth? I know the league, a lot of the guys I'm hearing are keeping quarterbacks, so I feel like if I don't go with Josh Allen, I'm going to be left with scraps. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Yeah, so uh, Josh Allen in the fourth or Madison in the tenth, and I really like that this caller gave us some league context because we are not – every decision is not the same answer without the context of your league, your league mates, that information. And that's why we want to equip you with information and let you make those decisions uh, to the best of your ability. For me, it was going to be really close. It was going to be Allen. And then with the context that everybody else is keeping quarterbacks, it was going to be Allen too. Oh, you tricked me. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm not going to go under the guys that like, okay, I'm just going to be able to get him because other people are keeping quarterbacks. I like the value of Allen in the fourth just fine. So, um, I may stand alone on that, but I know what I'm getting with Allen. I do not know what I'm getting with Madison. Both are great values. Yeah, I mean, I, I just agree with everything you said there, Andy. I, I was Allen first by a hair, and, and when everybody else is keeping a quarterback, look, they're keeping a worse quarterback than you. So That's true. <laughs> you, you get to – you get and, and Josh Allen in the fourth is a good value. He's been going in the second or third round right now. If Josh Allen were in the fourth round in a draft I was in, I'd be drafting him. So, obviously, the value of Alexander Madison in the 10th, incredible. But Alexander Madison has been still not a very highly – you know, you might be able to draft him in the fourth. Well, no, you, no. you don't have a fourth-round yeah. pick now. But. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, even being the most team Madison guy on the show, I would take Josh Allen in the fourth. All right. Uh, this question comes from Twitter. Josh Joseph says, after all the years making picks together – do you find that you agree more or less these days than you used to? I.e., I can't believe you just had that take. Mm. Interesting. Do we agree? What? <laughs> well, are we shocking one another with our the, takes? Are we uh, agreeing more or less? I mean, my memory on that drop though was like Andy hadn't seen like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs or something like it was some kids movie. That, <laughs> that we, what? Yeah, thank you. Where it was like, how have you? Not, that movie, it's so good. How have you not seen this? I, I don't think we agree or disagree any more or less than so. than we used to. I'm still shocked sometimes. Um, and then you know, uh, unfortunately, just like a moment ago when Andy was talking about Josh Allen and his description, I I liked what he said. I was a little shocked. Yeah, so. <laughs> I would say the. The when we do have a disagreement now that we're going into year nine, like I am a little, I'm a little older, a little wiser, less bullheaded about like, well, I don't even. Here's your opinion. Don't tell me your process because your opinion is just wrong. Right. And now it's right. okay. I don't agree with that opinion. What was your process that got you there? And then I'm like, okay, I'm, more persuadable. Maybe like maybe I still I feel don't like agree. I'm more persuadable. Yeah, you're just the. I'll admit it two or three shows from now. <laughs> right, right, right. You won't be changed in the moment. No, God, no. I did see Alexander Madison get a slight bump in the rankings from Andrew Holloway. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I also was making some arguments about Debo to you in yeah, the studio, yeah. and then I saw Debo. Yep. His stats went up a little bit, and you were it was like whispering sweet nothings into my ear. Yeah, I was too low. So, yeah, I think we try to be better listeners than maybe we used to be. Yes. But we don't intentionally try to agree or disagree. We're, we're trying to share strong convictions, lay it all out there. We're going to disagree. And, again, that's where you get handed the opportunity to make your own call. That's kind of the essence of the show from day one. Yeah, the show's purpose here is not to tell you what to do. It's to give you information and you decide what to do as the fourth person at the table. Yeah, and, and, and Kyle, you're making a good point here. I know you didn't weigh in on the microphone, but the idea of discussing percentage chances of things to happen, like putting it into context, like none of us can see the future. Obviously, if you listen to anything we said about Alan Robinson, we did not see the future, <laughs> but laying out the odds of, of things happening. I think that's important too. It's like, I can see the pathway to this. I think this is an 85% chance, you know, that type of, um, I think we all know how things can go wrong. I mean, we've been mm -hmm. around it and been right and wrong so many times. Uh, let's go to another voicemail question here. Hey guys, long time listener, first time caller. I get a hold over one running back and I'm stuck. I've got White from Tampa Bay and Pierce. Can't figure out which one is better. Let me know what you guys think. So 
It's that's a tough one so because Rashad White yeah. or Damian Pierce. Yeah, I think I think that is a tough one just because both players have uh, pathways to I think surprising people having a good year and then disappointing people. I was I was going to try to dig into my rankings here. I have I have them three apart. I have Damian Pierce at twenty two, Rashad White at twenty five. Uh, my default answer there in the moment, thankfully, would have agreed with that. I lean Damian Pierce. Uh, because he, I, he, what you saw on the field from Rashad White was a product of uh, – the success he had was a product of a lot of pass volume opportunities. Mm -hmm. He wasn't good on the ground. I know the offensive line should be better. But Damian Pierce was a constant, ever-present, week-to-week, wow, that's a good play. Wow, that's a good play. Wow, we broke that tackle. Um, so I lean that direction. It's I, uh, Where are you, Mike? It's It's tough for me between these two names because it's – Damian Pierce, I am I am confident in what I saw that Damian Pierce is a good player. I still don't think we know for sure on Rashad White if he's going to be a capable NFL player. But the ceiling for Rashad White, if he if it hits, if the Tampa Bay offense is just a little bit better than they're being given credit for right now, Rashad White is going to be the guy and he's going to catch a bunch of passes. Let's say that the vo the, the passing volume, it's going to come down. That will happen. But if it doesn't come down as far as like gloom and doom numbers, Rashad White is can still be like a 50-plus reception type of player. Damian Pierce will not be that. And Damian Pierce has Devin Singletary in Houston as well that he has to deal with. And I think that Singletary is an excellent player. So like both, both of these offenses should sh struggle. Damian Pierce is the more known commodity, but Rashad White has the higher ceiling. Like if, if you want to take the risk, for a, a higher, uh, like a bigger swing, higher ceiling, I'd go Rashad White. Safer is Damian Pierce. And I will lean definitely on the Damian Pierce side. I know I okay. have spoken uh, pretty anti-Damian Pierce. It, it, it's more anti him being a superstar, future, uh, you know, great stud top 12 running back. I, I, he was very good. Like, when you watched football last year, Rashad White was not good. Damian Pierce was very good. So that's uh, they're both on bad offenses. They both could have competition. Um, I'm going to take the guy I think is actually a, a good football player in Damian Pierce. YouTube question from Samuel White, 2027, says, how would you handle an offline live draft when there is no consensus ADP being used? So I guess uh, what Samuel's kind of referring to is if right. you're doing a live draft on a platform, uh, the league mates in that league have the opportunity to see that platform's ADP at all times. And uh, in an offline draft, you don't. I love that about offline yeah. drafts. Yeah, I hate the ADP being up there. Because I, I, it should be the player's responsibility to have a list or a cheat sheet, something that they've brought to the table that might be from a different source, um, their own, hopefully. And then you have surprises that are, are maybe more, you know, you can take more gambles because you're not afraid of somebody just drafting the next guy on the list. That's it. If you're doing an offline draft, I, I'm going to assume that everyone here is a seasoned fantasy football player. So they're, you're on your own. Like, deal with it. Like, figure out where your favorite source or just you build your own rankings, that type of a thing. If this is a new fantasy football uh, draft and these, and these managers are new to the, the game, I'd provide something like I would just print out whatever like you can print out our rankings bring those or print those for yourself and then go to some other site and take their rankings and give them to everybody else eh, yeah but it's just it's offline everyone it's this is an every player for themselves this one's really important guys uh, YouTube question from noodle 1855 noodle oh there's a question for for me I didn't notice that. Question for Andy. Can I be both Joe and Joseph? Mm, good question. Or does that only work for Cam and Cameron? What do you think, Andy? Um, I think you can be Joe and Joseph. I'm okay. Andy. I'm Andrew okay. and Andy. Okay. okay. All right. Now, Settled. see, one of the reasons why I can do that, just to be fair, my birth name is Andrew. Mm. Okay. That's where the Cam Cameron thing really disconnects so you're from reality. If your birth certificate said Andy, you cannot be Andrew. Is that what you are claiming? I think that's where I was headed, but I'm afraid that I will lose that war here. <laughs> yeah, I think you will. Because that sounds ridiculous. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> absurd. Why can't? Why can we only shorten your name? Why can't you? Why can't you ex expand it? 
it's it's really a good point because it's not can be long. It's not like a and d y is any part of the root. Like at least yeah. with some longer names like William, if you called him Will, it's all contained within the letters. Yeah, what is this Bill bullcrap? Well, when big, did that happen? Big Bill out there, <laughs> he's getting his name into everything, just like Bob, Robert. Yeah, what is yours? Should be Rob. What is happening? Why do you get to be Bob? Yeah, you better be Bobber. And don't even get me started on Richard. <laughs> yeah, but but, um, <laughs> but listen, if it's if, tricky. if the name Andy isn't contained in Andrew and it's still okay as a nickname, I guess Cam's nickname could be Cameron. Well, it is. It's long for Cam. Yeah. Do, no, is that what people would say? Uh, yeah. It's, Please it's call me long. Cameron. It's long for Cam. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um. Yeah. There you go. That's the answer. Handled it. Uh, speaking of Cameron Akers, Instagram question from Tyrell. Would you rather have him or James Conner? Mm. It's a really, really good and fair question. I see them as two players that I want a lot in fantasy football. Um, I believe that they are both good. If I have to guess which offense is better, I think the Rams offense is going to be a more successful offense this year. So I lean... I lean Cameron. I do see a world where both of these are uh, not as great as you'd hope. Uh, the offensive line in Los Angeles is a mess. Uh, James Conner, the passing game work, I'm going to side on that side. I think they need him. I think they need him in the passing game with a bad offensive line. I think he's going to be more valuable there than Cam Akers will be. We, got, we already got some uh, high T quotes from Coach Gannon. Out of Arizona, uh, inferring of shoo shoo of, shoo of, shoo of, shoo yeah, of, about talking explosives. About, you know, getting really excited to run James Conner up the middle, and that was that was the Cliff Kingsbury special. When you're at the goal line, there is will there be defenders there? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Like Cliff's play sheet for the goal line was it looked like a Tecmo Bowl screen, where it's just four options, but all four of them were run up the middle. And if Gannon is going to give that to us, then that's uh, that will be delightful. I'm I lean I I lean Cam Akers slightly. All right. Uh this question is interestingly timed because one of the players moved in my rankings this morning is this gentleman right here. YouTube question from Forbes says, uh, is Calvin Ridley worth his oh, ADP? Man. I am struggling so much with Calvin Ridley as I I was on a show earlier in the off season because his ADP was already just outrageous. If you're playing anything on underdog best ball, you were paying a fourth round or early fifth round pick for Calvin Ridley, a guy who hasn't been on a football field in essentially two years is uh, still somehow on his rookie contract and is like, now you're seeing he's already older for a wide receiver. And we really, really try to just enjoy the highlight videos from training camp and not let them be like, change your opinion on anything. But this one, <laughs> <laughs> there was a video of Zay Jones. Yes. If you didn't see it, there's a video of Zay Jones from the from Jacksonville running a route. It's not. It's clean. Good. Yeah, good. Oh, nice, work. nice route. route. Yeah. And then Calvin Ridley runs the exact same route, except. Calvin Ridley looked like he's being fast forwarded through the route compared to Zay Jones. And it was, oh my gosh, he's so much faster and so much cleaner than Zay. And it's, it, it's not the only play we've seen now. We've also seen him go up yeah, and make some vintage plays. In, the, in, the two hand land on the back and the, still pull it in. And That is an area where, yes, you don't want to overreact to a singular play. Yes. However, what was the first anti-Calvin Ridley thing you said? This is a player we haven't seen on a football field yes. for two years. So there is yep. value to seeing him on a field, potentially looking like he hasn't lost a step. Uh, right now, I am I am now the highest on Calvin Ridley. Really? I, I have him at 16. Nice. I, I like that because you know I believe that Trevor Lawrence is going to take yes. a, a I, full step forward. Which as, I am becoming more confident I, with you on that. Yeah, and I, I'm not um, – I'm I'm still not there fantasy wise with Trevor Lawrence because I don't know how much he'll run and whether or not he will be. I, I could see him having an awesome fantasy season, but I do think 
for NFL purposes, he is going to be gr really, really great this year. And Calvin Ridley will be the one. So when I look at his ADP right now, wide receiver 19, that's about where I have him. Middle of the fourth round. There are a, there are a couple guys right around him. Like Terry McLaurin's going after him. I would rather have Terry McLaurin. But most of the guys that are going after him, like DJ Moore and Drake London, I, I lean I lean on the Calvin Ridley side. So I think he's where he should be. I, I yep. think he's worth his ADP based on my ranking. Yeah, if Calvin stays in the fourth and things don't get out of control, I think it's probably worth the upside that – look, if he's still mostly Calvin Ridley from the Atlanta Falcons, I'm not talking the year that – and like everything went sour for him and he was just he was really struggling as a human had to leave if he's the guy who was the year before that then holy crap like that was heading into the year where Calvin Ridley bombed he was a consensus top 5 wide receiver so if that player is still there then in the 4th round take the gamble yeah, and, and there are other players I like on that team and I think that muddies the water a little bit too like Christian Kirk is a very good receiver Evan Ingram's going to get opportunities now that he signed this contract and what we saw at the end of last year, Travis Etienne, camp report, yeah. catching every ball thrown his way. So that muddies it a little bit, but but when you look at it and you're saying, okay, it's Amari Cooper around him in ADP, or Hopkins with the passing volume of Tennessee, or McLaurin with the quarterback shuffle, like I want the guy that has ceiling. Trevor Lawrence could throw for forty seven hundred to five thousand yards, like easily. So I don't know. I think that there's a, an opportunity there, and we may look back and go, "Gosh, dang it! This guy, yep. this guy's at six or seven at the end of the year, and and he's going at 19, which would make him a steal." So, um, I think it's more likely that Ridley could be at six or seven than Amari Cooper. Sure. I don't know if you guys agree with that. Uh, I I do agree. Um, this question comes in from Bill, probably William, <laughs> honestly. William Brass. And yet, there's no Billium. You know? Yeah. Where's Billium? I, that sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. Yeah, I would never name a kid. Maybe Billiams? Like, <laughs> oh, like Williams? Like the, the money? Yeah. Oh, like billions of dollars? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty stupid. One <laughs> billion dollars. <laughs> well, there you oh go. Um, he's Will for short, though. Uh, <laughs> Twitter question from Bill. Hey, ballers, up and coming podcaster here. What did you do to get started? Huh. How'd you get popular? How did you get listeners early? Thank you. <laughs> look, this, well, I think Jason would say we're great at yeah. what we do. Yeah, I mean, look, when you're great, you're great. <laughs> uh, how did we start? We started. Like, and that sounds ridiculous, but that's that's what we did. It was nothing more than that. We, we said, hey, this is something that we want to do. We think we can succeed at it. We think we could be good at it. Start. And that really is It's as, as easy as that. The there's the, like make sure you're research, uh, researching audio and recording and all this stuff, but there's there's not going to be a ton that you have to learn just to do uh, just to record vocals. You can get good microphones now for a good price. Only and, through us, we're the only ones. <laughs> we're the only ones selling them. Uh, but in, <laughs> but like in terms of like how do you actually grow your show? Just you got to you got to take the reps over and over and over and over. And then just hope that when the people start coming in that you are ready for that opportunity. Yeah, it's a, it's a two-step process. <laughs> step one, start. Step two, just be great. Oh, boy. You know? And that's, that's what that's what we did. <laughs> that was our plan. That's we, it. We it's wrote that down. So easy. Yeah, that was the two-step plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing I'll say, and I've, I've, I've learned this from this job, which is now going into year nine, and from a previous job when we had success doing video game stuff, I thought we were late mm -hmm. to both because, you know, podcasting, it's grown in popularity over the last handful of years. That's been very, you know, helpful to this show growing when the industry itself is growing. But I thought we were late to this game nine years ago. I thought we were late to our previous job. Mm -hmm. So that impulse to think you're late to the game, I think, is natural. And, you know, if you have something valuable to contribute, whether it's in this industry, true crime, you want to talk about something that you're interested in, which again, you better be interested in it. Yeah. Because if you're not, you're not going to survive the uh, part between you started and you're great. Cause it's a lot, it can be a, there's a big long timeline there and you got to love it enough to survive that timeline. 
So um, whatever, was, whatever say, you like. My, my final you know? piece of advice is liking what you're talking about, but when you are recording, have fun. Like you, you Podcasting is entertainment. So you, if, if you're not entertaining people, then you're, it's going to be difficult to retain listeners. Yeah, I agree. And the, the other thing I mentioned on another podcast the other day when it was asked was just, it's about connection. Like, I think why this show has succeeded is that we were ourselves and people connected to what we were talking about. So if you're pretending, you can't connect with somebody through, you know, not being authentic and being yourself. So I think connection is what makes podcasting especially unique. None of us feel connected to the radio broadcasts that we're listening to in the car right. as they repeat the same thing every 15 minutes. You feel connected to podcasters that you put on, you know, when you do the same routines every day. And I think that helps. So, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, Brooks probably has all the, the real secrets. Do you have anything to add Brooks? You guys covered them all. Nice. Yeah. I thought he might say that. <laughs> uh, find a great producer or two as well. That doesn't hurt. Yeah. Right after yeah. the stage two, like that was two B. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Doesn't hurt. Doesn't help. But <laughs> doesn't it doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know. No. Doesn't help. Doesn't hurt. I tried, guys. Al, judge, I tried. Thank we you. Appreciate it. We, yeah, we, we love y'all. I did my best. I mean, we doesn't bought you a help. <laughs> bought you a big neon sign and stuff. Um, all right. Oh, that gosh. is gonna do it for today's episode. Like I said at the top, so excited. August. It is here on Tuesday, and guess what? We're kicking it off with a big-time mock draft episode. Ooh, baby. Do not miss it. Make sure you subscribe. Go to YouTube.com slash TheFantasyFootballer. Subscribe. Click the bell. Mock Draft Tuesday. Talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.